What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Got another Patreon request for you. This one is for some comedy, so I'm pretty excited. No idea who Jeff Allen is. I don't think, anyway. Uh, but yeah, this request comes in from Marsha. Marsha, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for being a patron. Thank you for being a saucy Tron. I really appreciate it. it means so much to me. Uh, this is a longer video, so we're just going to jump right into it. If you guys are new here, do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button. Throw a like on the video. does wonders for me. I really appreciate it. Thank you in advance. Great to be back. I got to tell you, I've been married to my wife. Chill, man. Okay, now you can go. <laughs> Somebody's going to tell Jeff the rules, okay? You don't go till Saucy Dad says you can go. Now... Go. Great to be back. I gotta tell you, I've been married to my wife, Tammy, for 33 consecutive years. Thank you. And when you've been I with mean, a person that long, you learn to trust their instincts. So when she said to me a while back, you need to get diagnosed now. I said, for what? I feel fine. She said, that attention deficit stuff, I know you got it and it's driving me insane. <laughs> So I said, why now? She goes, what do you mean, why now? I said, well, if I got attention deficit, I've had it for 60 years. I've had it my whole life. It's not a virus. You can't catch it on a toilet seat. <laughs> it's not like you go to the bathroom in a mall and you come out two days later and you go, boy, I'm so distracted. Where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> so why are you bothered about it now? She said, because you keep telling me you'll do things around this house and you don't do them and it's driving me nuts. That's not attention deficit. That's No, that's just husband disorder. Sorry. You got, I mean, stop giving us 79 things that you want done so we can think about one. Give us one. And then when it's done, say, good boy. That's a good boy. And then we give us another one. That's enough with the 80 things. Chill out, ladies. It's <laughs> around this house and you don't do them and it's driving me nuts. That's not attention deficit. That's passive aggressive. <laughs> And I've had that for 63 years. <laughs> but I honored my wife, because that's what a man does, sir. That's right, you do, right? You honor your wife. I went and got diagnosed. I spent an hour with a psychologist. After an hour, it turns out, I'm not only do I have attention deficit, I'm also a functioning hypochondriac. <laughs> functioning, I'm not clinical. Those people are sick. <laughs> but this is how God protects his children. It's my ADHD that keeps my hypochondria functional. <laughs> On those days, I've convinced myself I need an ambulance. By the time I get to the phone to call one, I've been distracted four or five times. <laughs> I usually wind up in the kitchen. I got a telephone. I can't remember why I got a telephone. <laughs> and that's when I order the pizza. So. My kids love me. Dad's dying again. Really? Pepperoni pops. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Tammy, Tammy mocks me. She does. She makes. Uh, we'll be laying in bed watching Discovery Channel and some strange new disease. Not four minutes into it, she leans over. You got it yet? <laughs> Thinking about it. What's well, a nodule? I could have nodules. I don't even own a nodule. Oh boy, I'm feeling nodule all of a sudden. It's when the kids are yelling, "Breadstick! Shut up, you punks! I could die on you." <laughs> I've been married 32 years, and uh, I got... My father gave me one really wise piece of advice before I got married, and it's held true for 32 years. On my wedding day, my father said to me, before you argue with your new wife, and you're going to argue with her, before you do, take some time, step back, ask yourself two questions. Do you want to be right, or do you want to be happy? <laughs> right. And then he broke down and sobbed right in front of me. <laughs> I had no idea what that man was talking about. <laughs> 32 years later, I can tell you this. I'm a happy, happy, happy man. Never right, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. Woo-wee! <laughs> I ain't been right in 12 years now. Who cares? Sometimes I even have to ask her, am I happy? Oh, you better believe you're happy. Okay. <laughs> I was just checking with you, buttercup. <laughs> Call my friends up. I can't go golfing, but I'm a happy, happy, happy man. <laughs> hey, 
don't get me wrong, we argue. You've got to argue in your marriage. You don't argue in your marriage, it'll build up in your brain over time and fries your brain. Yeah, and then you wind up like those babbling, mumbling couples you've seen in Arizona, Florida. These 50 plus years of marriage, they're kind of walking down the street. The wife is fine. It's the poor husband eight feet behind her that scares me to death. This poor man's all hunched over, he's vibrating, mumbling. With... Always telling me what to do. Start telling you what to do. I'm a man. You can't tell. I'm a man. I'm a man. This poor guy's starting to try to win back all the arguments he's been throwing away for 50 years. You know, he was 6'3 when he got married. Now he's four foot one. Look at the poor man. Weighed down by half a century of apathy. Leave a toilet seat up if I want to leave a toilet seat up. Tell me what to do. I hope you sit in the water every night. I don't care. Anymore. And that's when she turns around. What'd you just say to me? I didn't say nothing to you. Listen, if you haven't seen that right there, you're lying to yourself. Everybody has seen that. <laughs> it's so, it's so scary. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Scary. You have to learn how to communicate. That's the word, communication. You have to learn how your spouse communicates. That takes time. Men and women communicate differently. It took me two years of marriage to figure out my wife will never tell me to do anything around our home. If Tammy wants me to do something, she'll ask me a question. It's from the question that I got to stand there and figure out. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, I'm not alone. What it is she wants me to do? <laughs> Simple example, say I leave a pair of my underwear in the middle of the bedroom floor, which frosts my wife. That's her word when she's angry. That just frosts me, Jeffrey. <laughs> if I'm not frosting her, I'm driving her up a wall. That's another one. Kids would come in, where's mom? She's up the wall with frostbite, that's all I know. <laughs> you won't believe what put her there, man. It was that pair of underwear in the middle of the bedroom floor. You're looking at the most powerful piece of cotton on planet Earth. So I leave my underwear in the middle of the room. Would she come to me and say to me, pick those up? That's three words. Hey, pick those up. Three words! Would she say them? No, because that would be simple, direct, and right to the point. And at that moment, we would be communicating at the highest human level. The way God the Creator intended it, through language. She looks at me, looks at my underwear, and then asks, are those yours? I sure hope they are, otherwise I got a few questions of my own. <laughs> what do you want? That's the only question a man has for his wife. What do you want? What Go do you want? And, code and tell me what you want. What do you want? What? Well, just say it. Just say it, please, for the love of God. <sighs> It's not, hey, babe, can you take out the trash? It's, oh, the trash is always full every time I want to throw something away. Just, can you throw, that's not a question. You didn't ask me anything just there. So if I just walk away, I, I, I didn't do anything wrong. Just, hey, can you take out the trash? You, absolutely, I'm on it. I'm on it. Oh, the, all the dirty dishes are in the sink. Hey, babe, could you load the dishwasher? It's so easy. It's so easy. You see, you sound out, you hear how positive I, I sound and how happy. Cut it out, ladies. Just ask. Just ask. If it's red, say it's red. Not, ugh, that, you know, it's almost orange and not quite yellow, but, uh, Just say it's red. <laughs> that was pretty good, actually. <laughs> My favorite question, we weren't married two months. I'm leaving the house. I got golf clubs on my shoulder. Got golf shoes. Where are you going? I already know it's coming. All of you do. Every man watching me right now knows what's coming. Hey, wh where are you going? Going skydiving, honey. I just wanted my clubs in case I, any seagulls get in my way. What are you talking about where am I going? We weren't married two months. I'm leaving the house. I got golf clubs on my shoulder, got golf shoes in my hand, and everybody knows what she asked me. Where are you going? 
was only married a couple months. I didn't know any better. I looked at I'm going bowling, Columbo. What do you mean? <laughs> if you're taking notes, that would be the wrong answer. <laughs> An hour later, I was still in my living room. Come on, tell me, what is this about? Please, let me know, please. I can make the back nine, just let me know. <laughs> It's about knowing the right answer. That's why. Why your beautiful, intelligent wife would ask such a banal question. I know better today. If I'm leaving the house with golf clubs on my shoulder today and Tammy says, where are you going? We'll put these in the car, baby. I'm going to come back and mow our lawn. That's what I'm yeah. Just practicing leaving for golf. <laughs> you got to know your love language. I read a book. Some guy wrote a book, Dr. Gary Chapman wrote a book called Five Love Languages. According to Dr. Gary Chapman, there are five languages of love between a man and wife. Tammy and I read that book twice in one week because we didn't see our love language in there. <laughs> yeah, apparently bitterness, sarcasm, not part of Dr. Gary Chapman's love life. That's, that's all I noticed. My father used to give my brother and I food my sisters didn't have to eat. He called it man food. It was sardines in a can. Ugh. And he said, I said, I'm not eating this. He said, it'll put hair on your chest. I'm eight years old. That a good thing? He said, every man wants hair on his chest, boy. Really? Yeah, who knew in the 21st century all the men would be waxing all the hair off their chest? I want to meet the first man that ripped the hair out of his chest. I really do, because I'm going to punch him right in the face. In a Christian loving way, of course. I'll be right behind you, buddy. I'll give him one right in, right in the nose, right in the beak. I mean, come on. Really? Ugh. Tammy says to me about a year ago, she goes, I want you to look into the waxing thing. That's what she said, sir. I want you to look into the waxing thing. I honored my wife. I looked into the waxing thing. Came back and told her, get used to the pelt. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Have we lost our minds as a culture? We spend billions of dollars to have somebody rip the hair out of our body by the root. That hurts. <laughs> but we won't let our federal government drip water on the faces of terrorists. <laughs> I think the CIA needs to open up some spas around the world. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. You know, Ahmed, before we send you back to the battlefield as part of the new Western Civilization Catch and Release program, <laughs> you're in luck. The U.S. government's going to clean you up today, my man. Those 72 maidens you're dying to lay with in the next life, they don't want to lay next to a throw rug. So get in the van, my hirsute little friend. We're going to the mall. Why is his name going to be Ahmed? <laughs> it's just a thought. So full disclosure, I got waxed. I know. Oh, man. You know, I don't know. I do feel like we've stopped just doing everything that we're asked to do which believe it or not is okay it's all right you know it's it's all right i want to keep my hair okay strictly because of the pain and if it grows back and does that velcro th app no i will be the most angry person you've ever met in your entire life no there's no way he actually went through with that. Tammy kept pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. She finally said the magic words. She said, I think it would be sexy on you. <laughs> Look at my wife and I have been married 33 years. Yeah, and then after the first night, I didn't really like it. You're like sticky and it's like there's too much friction. So you should look into getting some implants. 
you know, they do those little hair implants or maybe some Rogaine, you know, some chest Rogaine. You just want to. Bam! Oh, sorry. I thought you were a, a robber. <laughs> Sexy is not a word often used in our home. <laughs> Our idea of sexting is we send pictures of desserts to each other on our cell phones. <laughs> we get it back from her. Is that a six-layered carrot cake? You naughty girl. <laughs> so I don't care what it is. If my wife said to me, you know, a face tattoo would be sexy. I'm getting it done. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Just for the chance. Just for the chance. It might work. It might actually work. Hell yeah. Right here. Sign me up, buddy. Do a whatever you do. And I love mom. Right on my face. There are three billion women that inhabit planet Earth. I only care if one of those women thinks I'm sexy. That's it. Her. So I made a decision. When she leaves town, I was going to surprise her. I said, I'm going to get waxed. I got on the Google, I looked up the waxy people, <laughs> found Michelle, it's Michelle, don't make the mistake of calling her Michelle. <laughs> Apparently I hit a sore spot. <laughs> so Michelle gets me all ready to go, lathered up, got a piece of tape there, she says, you ready? I said, yeah, you know. She goes, <laughs> Just, uh, how do you not just black out? I've never had that happen. I tried to scream and nothing came out. I gotta figure there were dogs two blocks away going. <laughs> Sounds like another man's getting a wax job. <laughs> With Michelle. It hurts so bad, I'm telling you. I, and then she starts to put another piece of tape on me, and I can't. I ended up tapping out like a wrestler. I'm packing out. <laughs> and I found my voice. I said, no! Get away from me, you sick woman! Don't touch me. Uh, Ouch! Uh, That's what I wanted to say when I couldn't say... I was going to quit. I really was. I was going to leave. And I looked in the mirror and I had this white strip. It looked like a name tag with no name on it. It was just... You know, and all these weeds around it. You know? So, so you're locked in. I couldn't stop. Anyway, she, she just says, I can take my time. I go, don't take it. Just get it over with. Cleans me up. I look in the mirror. I was pink, sir. I was pink. I was raw pink. I look like a flabby piece of bazooka bubblegum. <laughs> and all I can think of is she thinks it's sexy. Okay. No counting for taste, but I'm all in. So the next day she came home from the road. I wanted to surprise her. So I went. Oh, this poor guy. I. Why does everybody already know what, what happened to him? We already know how this ends. We already know how it ends. Yet we continue to chase our tails. We continue. How about, do, do I look good now? What do you think of this? Huh? What do you, what do, you do you like it? Like, I finally had to go get these bad dragons because of the headaches and the lights. So the first thing I did when I came back, naturally, is I put them on. She goes, oh my God, you look so good with those on. I can't wait till you actually need them. Did you just say that to me? Did you just say, you can't wait till I lose my vision? You're, real? okay. No, that's great. I, you know, I can't wait until your hip starts falling out of socket when you, you know, stub your toe. I, you know, it's gonna be a great aging process. I'm excited. No, totally. I, I get where you're coming from. No! So, you know, she goes, you, you know, she said whatever she said, the whole sexy thing, you know. So she turns around and she goes, so naturally, 
I set them about here. I lost my teeth and I got really old. Hey, hey! And, uh, well, they weren't so sexy anymore now, were they? What I proved, what I gained, that's, you know, that's not the point. Luckily, because I didn't gain much. I didn't prove anything. But now we're not excited for the aging process anymore. Now are we, darling? <laughs> but that's what, we already know what happened to poor Jeff. But go ahead, tell us about it, man. He is hilarious, by the way. How have I never heard of this guy? He is so funny. I went in the bathroom, put on some shorts. I took off my shirt. I'm standing there in shorts, no shirt, trying to get her to notice while we're conversing. <laughs> she looks at me. She says, are you having a stroke? I said, no. She goes, what'd you do? I said, I got waxed. Ew. <laughs> That's the reaction I was looking for. What's the ooh? She goes, oh, God, put a shirt on. It's creeping me out. She goes, you look like Patrick from SpongeBob, Jeff. Come on. Patrick's not sexy. The things you do to honor your wife, sir. Never again. Are you kidding me? Any man in this room over 40 knows if you would have actually showed up for a bike ride when you were 12, wearing a helmet, <laughs> you would have needed the helmet to keep your head from caving in while your friends were pelting you with rocks. <laughs> Dorco, what's with that plastic hat? <laughs> Cut it out. Cha -ching, cha -ching. <laughs> you dented my basket. I'm telling my mom. <laughs> I had the pleasure of growing up in America before the lawyers took it over and ruined it on us. And yeah. In my day, if a kid fell off the monkey bars and chipped a bone in his arm, that was tragic, but it was funny to the rest of us. You know? <laughs> Certainly wasn't reasons to take the monkey bars off the playgrounds. We all did dumb things. That's how you learn not to do dumb things. Right. C.S. Lewis said suffering was God's megaphone. That's right. You do dumb things, it hurts, and then you learn not to do it. Right. But we're the most painted versus that. And we, I'll give you an example. When I was 12, someone told me to get a ball jar, a canning jar. Find some dry ice, put it in the jar, put the lid on it. So I said, what's going to happen? They said, it's going to blow up. And I said, cool. <laughs> Where do I get dry ice at? And they said, the ice cream man. So one day I heard the ice cream man coming down my street. I run out with one of my mother's canning jars, and I ask, you got any dry ice? He said, what you going to do with it? I said, I'm going to put it in this jar. I'm going to put the lid on it, and it's going to explode. Ice cream man says, oh, here's your dry ice. <laughs> That's the America I grew up in. Yeah. Nowadays, that ice cream guy would run to his seat, throw it in drive, and be gone before he lost everything he owns from a lawsuit. But when Karen comes out, why'd you give my son that? Oh, my God. Uh yes. And of course, that night, my mother was at our kitchen table picking shards of glass out of my forehead. <laughs> and my father came walking in. How'd that happen? Someone told me you put dry ice in a ball jar. Bet you won't do that again. It'll, it'll, it'll blow up. <laughs> so knowing that, you were just staring at that jar, waiting for it to blow right up in your face. Yep. <laughs> what am I raising, a moron? <laughs> I could see why you'd think that. <laughs> I never did it again, because that had been really dumb. That's how you learn. My yep. nephew's coming by. This poor kid's 11 years old. I look at him, where's he going? My sister said rollerblading. I thought he was going to disarm a nuclear device. <laughs> poor kid looked like the Michelin man. Foam, rubber, plastic everywhere. She says, I don't want him to get hurt. I said, hurt? He could take a semi at 80 miles an hour in that house. <laughs> Falling on concrete is supposed to hurt. Oh, man. I, I seriously... This guy... I'm starting to have, like, weird visions that this is me in 30 years. But uh, I, I, I preach this, man. I preach this. This very thing. We are handicapping our kids. Like, how do we not see that, man? We are handicapping them. And I get it. I get it. You want to protect them. You want to keep them safe. You want to keep them healthy. That's your duty as a parent. I get it. 
But do you not feel like you had good parents? I do. I I had amazing parents that wanted nothing but the best for me. But I was outside and not watched. I was allowed to make mistakes and learn from them. Exactly what he just said. How are they going to learn anything if they don't do anything? If that Michelin man kid goes out and does 60 miles an hour and eats it, gets back up, he's fine. Not a scratch on him, literally. He didn't learn a thing. Didn't learn a thing. Thumper. Thumper doesn't doesn't agree with me. But I don't know, man. I just, I hate it. I hate the, the direction that all that stuff is going in. Because I just feel like it's so bad. It's so bad. It's just bad. There's nothing good that can come from that. Nothing. We are literally protecting them and guarding them from life. And that you can't do that because you're not going to always be there. They're not going to always be with you in your house. They, they have to go get hurt. They have to fall off the monkey bars and break an arm. They have to. Otherwise, when it happens to them at 20 years old, their world is going to end and they're not going to know how to deal with it. I, I sliced my hand open on a thorn bush cleaning out my yard the other day, cleaning out the tree line. Slice my hand open. All of my kids, you would have thought that my tendons were sticking out and my hand was hanging on by a piece of skin the way that they reacted. Like, guys, I wipe the blood and show... It's just a little... It's okay. It's just a little cut. I'm, I'm okay. Oh, aren't you going to go get a Band-Aid? <laughs> a Band-Aid? No. I don't use Band-Aids. I never have. It's either I'm not bleeding... Or hospital. Those are the, the, uh, my, that's my spectrum. That's my spectrum. What is he barking at? Ay, ay, ay. Sorry, guys. But yeah, I mean, we don't need a band-aid every time you nick yourself, you know? Oh, I got a wet old pokey pokey. I did a band-aid. What do you mean you need a band-aid? Lick it. It's good for you. I don't know, man. I don't. I, I literally preach this all the time. It, you are not doing anything good for your kids. And listen, we do the same with ours. Why? Because I do what I'm told. <laughs> and she do what she she does what she believes is right. So, our kids are in the same exact deal. With pads and helmets and don't do this and don't do that. And protected from all this it's just not it's not going to lead to anything good they're not going to learn anything from that they have to go get hurt it sounds mean but they have to go get hurt did you not get hurt as a kid and learn not to do things again i know i did and i'm so happy that i grew up when i grew up because man did i barely make it i barely made it before the world we know today started good grief 80 miles an hour in that office. <laughs> Falling on concrete is supposed to hurt. See, that's your incentive to learn to stay upright on the rollerblades. Right. <laughs> They've ruined everything. Playgrounds. I took my granddaughter to a playground. What happened to playgrounds? The slide is five feet high, made out of plastic. She would go four inches and stop, four inches and stop, four inches and stop. That's not a slide, it's a scoot. Wee papa, wee papa, wee papa, wee papa. What did we have? We had a six-story high solid steel structure. <laughs> you come by, it sounds like the Indy 500. <laughs> Mid-July would hit a temperature of about 285 degrees. Yep. You lose two layers of skin on the way down. Another layer when you hit the ground like a flat rock on a pond. <laughs> Come back picking gravel out of your thighs. Yeah. I want to go again. Wee papa, wee papa, wee papa. I wanted to shove her down the slide. I did. I wanted to shove her so she'd know what an exhilarating feeling of sliding. And I felt six iPhones on my back. Go ahead, old man. We dare you. crazy man it's crazy 
Some, something's got to give, man. Something has to give. It's nuts. Car seats? I'm not against car seats. I'm just telling you. I'm tired of strapping my granddaughter in like a NASCAR driver to drive two miles to get a Diet Coke from the Mini Mart. She's 54 pounds. I'm going to get a hernia hauling her in and out of the state. What age can you take them out now? Five, seven, 18? Here's your high school diploma. You get to ride home like a big boy today. I mean, come on. Car seat? We don't even have seat belts. I walked the back seat of my mother's car for four years. She's, and she'd be driving, I'd just be walking the back seat side to side. Sure, every now and then she'd hit the brakes, I'd fly up into the front. She'd toss me back like a trout. What are you doing up here? Get back there. I got pulled over by the police. I'm not making this up. I got pulled over by the police because it was sunny day and my granddaughter was in the back seat with sunshine through the window and the policeman said, I'm not going to write you up this time, but you need to have a sunshade to protect her from the sun. I go, what? Are you kidding? I, mean, I almost got arrested. I said, are you you're kidding me? This is a joke, right? When did the sunshine become this evil thing? Sun, we didn't have sunscreen. You know what sunscreen was when I was a kid? Dirt. That's what it was. Dirt. And why? Because we would eat dirt, and it would get all over our face and protect us from the sun. And then we'd wash it down with water from a garden hose. And then I'd take a bath, put on my asbestos pajamas, and go to bed. And look how I turned out. It's, but there's so much more to it, man. There's, you learn so much more than that during those experiences. You learn how to fight for your fight for things. You learn how to defend yourself. You learn how to how to overcome adversity. Like it translates into so many things in life. We wonder why. <laughs> we wonder why my generation and younger have the problems they have. Hello. They've never experienced, they've never had to overcome anything. They've never had to figure anything out for themselves because it's always been, well, I'll, I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. And that's a great parent. Absolutely. You cannot deny that. You're a great parent for doing that, but you have to let them struggle. You have to let them just go until they can't take it anymore until you give a little help. You have to. You have to, or what are they getting? I mean, man, it, life is going to be very, very hard on them if they've never had to do anything or learn anything or God forbid lose. Sometimes you can't figure it out. Sometimes you don't get the thing that you're trying to get. And that's life, baby. I mean, come on. I just, I don't know, man. He is talking my language. This dude is amazing. I need to hear more of Mr. Jeff Allen. The only kids we had to worry about the sun were the redheads, the gingers. You'd hear them sizzling like, like bacon <laughs> in right field out there. You'd... <laughs> Rusty, you might want to get in. You know, and the kid run off the field like a leper, pieces of them falling off. You know. We still didn't put sunscreen on them. We gave them a snow cone. Rub it on, you'll be fine. <laughs> Nuts. I mentioned my grandbabies. I am a grandfather, and anybody, anybody here that's a grandparent knows those are the most. Low T in menopause. Oh boy. Uh, now it's time for me to learn something. Okay. Special, special people on the planet. They really are, and they're the most heartwarming. And I can tell you where I was and what time of day it was when my granddaughter, the first grandchild we had, said my name, Papa. She was in the back. That's my dad's name for my kids, Papa. That's how we were watching her. She was at the house and she was splashing around in a tub in the early evening. And my wife calls me into the bathroom. She says, you gotta hear this. And my little granddaughter's sitting there and Tammy says, Evelyn, who is that? And Evelyn goes, Papa. I'm telling you, man. I started crying. And that's when Tammy said, you need to get a blood test for that low T stuff. <laughs> Kenya. 
She says, you need to go get tested for low T. And I said, uh, sir, I honored my wife. That's what you do, you honor your wife. I got tested, blood test. Anyway, they call me up and they go, you don't have low T. I go, I don't? He goes, no, you have no T, none, zero. <laughs> we had to retest you, it was so low. They told me I was elevated in estrogen. I had high estrogen levels and no testosterone, which explained all the... So, uh, whoa. Okay. Well, happy wife. <laughs> happy wife. <laughs> happy wife to the point of becoming your wife. <laughs> estrogen. I had high estrogen levels and no testosterone, <laughs> which explained all the HGTV I had been watching. <laughs> Yeah, my friends would call me on Sunday. Hey, man, the Bears are on. I'd go, no way, man. Chip and Joanna got a special. Huh? <laughs> so I said to the doctor, if I do this tea thing, if I do this tea thing, what will it do for me? And he said, you'll be like a 25-year-old man again. I went, really? Will I be that stupid? Because <laughs> I got to tell you, I don't think my body could survive my 20s again. I really don't. He says, no, you'd be like a 25-year-old. And I go, really? I got a 58-year-old menopausal wife at home. Think I should consult her to see if she wants a 25-year-old man chasing her around? <laughs> She'd finally put a knife in my chest and end it. I know she would. <laughs> the next thing you know, she's on Dateline trying to defend herself. <laughs> you ever watch Dateline? I'm telling you. The whole franchise, the spouse is killing each other. That's it. <laughs> Men, men, watch five datelines with your wife. You'll look her right in the eye. We doing all right, you and me? <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, that menopause, I didn't see it coming. I really didn't. There are nights that I lie in bed and dream about the good old days of PMS. Trust me. There are weeks that go by. I cannot get her home cold enough for her body. I'm telling you, there's not enough Freon in the world. If there's a hole in the ozone, it's over the roof of my home in Tennessee. <laughs> it's 48 degrees in my bedroom. I got meat hanging off my curtain rods. She walks in and turns on some 64-bladed fan she installed. I had to bolt the furniture to the floor to keep from getting sucked up through the roof. She stands in the middle of the room. Why is it so hot in here, Jeffrey? Why is it so hot? I can't see her because of the fog that's coming out of her mouth. And then she wakes me up to feel her night sweats. Is that even necessary? No, no. I'm sound asleep when she zips my parka open while I'm laying there. <laughs> Wake up and feel this, Jeffrey. It's disgusting. Look at me. There's like a furnace in me or something. You're lucky you don't have to go through this. You know, I wouldn't if you'd quit waking me up and telling me about it. I could sleep right through the perspirating. I could. Doesn't make a lot of noise. Oh, and one night I wake up, there's a human being at the foot of my bed. Three o'clock in the morning. I don't know if you've ever had this. There's a full-grown human in three in a dark room. Ah, I was, ah, I was had a heart attack. It was her. She's at the foot of my bed, just cutting off the bottom of her flannel pajamas with scissors because they were sticking to her sweaty legs. And this Why are you wearing flannel? <laughs> demonic thing was coming out of her mouth <laughs> I'm not kidding I grabbed my sons the next day I said mom's going through some serious stuff here like what remember those nights you didn't do your homework she'd get mad and yell at you real loud he goes yeah I remember that this is different she might be crying and then stab you <laughs> <laughs> I am the opposite of excited for that. Oh, golly, golly, golly. That sounds, that sounds wonderful. But you know what? That's why I invest in a quality couch. No, seriously, it's why I invest in a great couch. Because every now and then, after, you know, for us it's 14 years, there are days where it's just, we each get better sleep, not sleeping next to each other. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, you know? <laughs> we'll be all over each other the next morning, apologizing and expressing our love. But every now and then you just get a, 
just separate. And apparently, from what Mr. Allen just had to say, there's a lot more of that coming. Yippee. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that was a really, really long one. Uh, so anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that, Marsha. It was Marsha, right? The video was so long, I forgot your name. Marsha, yes. Thank you so much for that, though. That was hilarious. I definitely need to see more of him. That is my kind of humor all day. Just totally true and real and relatable. Oh, man. Very funny. Thank you for that, Marsha. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being a patron. Thank you for being a saucy tron. I love you guys, man. I'm going to hop into another one. I'll see you there. Take care of yourselves and each other. Stay safe out there. Peace out, saucy fam.